Hey guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, you may notice that I sound sick and that is because I have a cold. Today's topic will not be making me feel any better because we're going to be talking about a very disturbing trend involving the younger generation and social media. It is quite sickening, but also something I think needs to be talked about. So we are going to have to suffer together. Before we begin though, please make sure you are subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. So the trend that I'm referring to is children growing up way too fast. There seems to be a lack of this tween phase that kids go through the awkward phase where you are transitioning from a child to a teenager and then also from a teenager to an adult. And I want to talk about why I believe this might be happening. Of course, social media is playing a huge role in this. You may have seen these videos where people on TikTok who are closer to my age, so in their early 20s, are showing photos of themselves when they were teens and then photos of the teenagers now right and the way that they're dressing versus how we dressed when we were the same age We're also seeing girls as young as like 12 years old with a full face of perfect makeup. And while that is impressive, you know, I'm sure that they have fun. I think it becomes a problem when the purpose of that makeup is to look older. There seems to be a lot of peer pressure going on. So when you're a kid and you're seeing that all your friends are trying to look 30 when they're 13, especially as a young girl, there's obviously gonna be pressure to fit in with a crowd because you don't wanna be uncool, you don't wanna be the one standing out. And I think that's really sad honestly, because looking back, social media was still a problem, you know, but we didn't have TikTok, but Instagram, YouTube, those platforms have changed drastically over the years. Also, screen time has no doubt uh, went up for kids. And I feel like internet access in general is part of the problem because kids are now being exposed to things that parents cannot always protect them from. So while, of course, you could still compare yourself to other people on these apps, mostly people would just post photos of their dogs or their family vacation, you know what I mean? So nowadays, I just feel like kids don't feel comfortable just being a kid and posting awkward videos, posting funny videos because they're scared of being judged by their peers. It becomes clear that they have less time nowadays to have this you know, carefree, playful sort of childhood. So I'm thinking of Halloween costumes because Halloween is coming up. So, you know, it's like sexy rat sexy armadillo sexy tree like just think of anything put sexy in front of it what are you i'm a mouse duh it's just that the age which girls especially are doing that is getting younger and younger and what comes to mind for me is where are the parents unfortunately however in many cases it's the parents who are to blame because they profit off of exploiting their children what are you thinking what you can't be doing stuff like that it's all my and they are the ones who are telling the kids to, you know, do this dance on TikTok or wear this and I'll film you. You ever asked to pose provocatively or to wear things you were uncomfortable wearing? Oh yeah, Tiffany would always tell me to go up into Piper's closet and get something that's more tight and revealing. And then the parents make money off of the child without any concern for what this may mean for the child's future, right? For their future relationships, for their career. The lawsuit, they accuse her of exposing them to a physical, emotional, verbal, and sometimes sexually abusive environment. Sophie, how old were you when you were asked to dress provocatively? I believe I was 11 or 12. This is my it does remind me a lot of these child beauty pageants, you know, where parents would live through their children. Mom Kerry Campbell in 2011, after she admitted to injecting her then eight-year-old daughter, Brittany, with Botox. Um, it hurts sometimes, but I get used to it. A lot of the moms that are there giving their kids Botox, and it's pretty much like the thing. I'm not the only one that does it. Four-year-old, tasked with impersonating singer Dolly Parton, was padded with fake breasts and an ample rear end. And it's also very time-consuming, right? Instead of, again, going outside with their friends, these kids have to compete against other children and constantly judged for how they look. Is your mother using you? for her own dashed dreams. Oh yeah, definitely. It's happening during a time when we have people trying to normalize pedophiles by insisting that we call them maps so that we can, you know, destigmatize it. Right, that's that's the one thing you really should be fighting to destigmatize. Pedophiles. 
and during a time when teachers who are working with kindergartners are so adamant on being able to discuss their sexuality or their gender identity with kids. Also what they're seeing in the media. So in TV shows, in movies, I think one of the most well-known examples is Euphoria, when they cast adults in their mid-20s to play a 16-year-old. And then we have teens watching that and maybe wondering why they don't look like that, why they don't look like a 20 or 25 year old, you know, which can in turn cause body image issues. And again, just sexualizing teens and also the tweens, as I've said, seem to be disappearing. So that's usually ages like nine to 12 ish, where you have this gradual transition from a child to a teenager. Now, of course, this isn't gradual for everyone because a lot of kids, unfortunately, uh, due to certain circumstances, have to grow up way faster. We have these acts portraying teenagers and then writing nude scenes for them. Then they try to play it off, especially in Euphoria, as sexual liberation, right? Like that's female empowerment because it's not the men that are objectifying you, it's it's you. You're objectifying yourself. Oh, great. Now, now that's great. No, like now it's just both. You know, you, you didn't really help the situation in any way. So I don't like that they're sending that kind of message out. And the problem is that in many of these TV shows, I guess it's one thing if you're just showing that, oh yeah, this happens, it's unfortunate, but a lot of these TV shows, they're romanticizing it, right? And I think that's a problem because the media that we look at, it does matter. Mix that message with an undeveloped mind of a 15 year old girl or boy, it's just not a good idea. And I don't get why these grown men are so obsessed with having these teenagers in highly sexual situations. Just make them college students. And this is the messaging that encourages young women to start an OnlyFans as soon as they hit 18. Bad Baby started an X-rated OnlyFans literally the week she turned 18. Baby's account immediately blew up and had over 100,000 subscribers in less than a month. However, I will say that whenever people have this conversation, um, there's a focus on blaming the young women and in many cases, the teens who are, you know, making this content and not the men that are paying for it. It's kind of hypocritical if you're also paying random women on the internet who are barely legal to show you this explicit content. Because do you think that if those men weren't paying the girls to make that content, do you think they would still be making that content? Hell no. No. Because they're doing it for the money or the attention or both. You take those two things away, there's no incentive. So it takes two to tango. If you're a grown woman, you can do as you please. That's your choice. However, I don't think we should be advertising this to young women who are literally still in school saying, this is a great option for you. In fact, don't actually pursue a career or starting a family. Start an OnlyFans because that's empowering. And this is where things get interesting. So like most things in life, if you have one extreme, in this case, 13 year old girls wanting to look 30, you have another extreme. So 30 year olds wanting to look 13, which is also very creepy. Is it jelly fruits? Orange. Oh, juicy squirt. A lot of people obsessing over having qualities that preteens have. So, high pitched voice. <laughs> Acting like a child, right? Literally, the caption is her speaking as if she were a child. We all know who this character is, and we all know that this character is not 18. And also, an absence of body hair. Now, I know this is going to surprise so many people, but women have body hair. Huh? I know, that, that's crazy, uh, but they do, right? We're mammals, just like men. We have extremes on both sides and I'll talk about both. Um, but first I wanna talk about people who, or, or companies rather, who say that if you aren't completely hairless, you're actually not a woman. That you're, it's actually impossible to be feminine. You have to spend money on our razors, uh, waxing, laser, creams, etc. So the beauty industry needs you to know that it's actually unnatural for women to have body hair. Now, just ignore the fact that as a woman, you naturally grow body hair. It's unnatural and it's unhygienic. That's why we also tell men that if they don't shave from head to toe, that they have a hygiene problem. That's why we're always saying that, right? No, 
And then on the other side, we have the modern day feminists who are also obviously not fans of this, and I totally get it. But they walk around showcasing their unshaven armpits or legs, whatever. I have this thing, call it a little quirk if you will. I have hair in my armpits patriarchy waiting for a trophy for that and in many cases get it partnering with the drive awareness of underarm stigma i cannot call my excitement because i am on the walls of the subway in times square i am on the walls my face is here and my pits are there my hairy pits the same hairy pits that my coach because unfortunately this decision as silly as it may seem is a political statement whether you shave or don't shave now here's an idea why don't we not shame women if they choose to shave and also not shame women if they choose not to shave and not make it a political statement. So I think it's so silly for both sides to say, I deserve an award because I shave and everyone else who doesn't, you are disgusting monsters, you're not real women. Or I deserve an award because I don't shave. And if you do shave, you're part of the problem, you're oppressed, no. So there seems to be a problem with finding the middle ground. Back to the problem with sexualizing teens and um, children even. Uh, I have a problem with anime. This may seem very random, so I'm gonna just need you to wait a second just to hear me out. Uh, I used to watch anime when I was in high school. I don't anymore, but when I used to watch it, I couldn't help but notice that almost all the female characters talk like children. Like, they literally talk like children. They also, in many cases, look like children. So I always thought that was very disturbing. I don't see many people talking about this and I don't know why, especially given how popular anime is. I, I don't know. It's something I've always wondered though. So if anyone knows what I'm talking about, please comment because it comes off as very I feel like there's no way around it. And again, not just in anime, I don't know why we're doing this and why it's so normalized. Just make the characters adults. Young adults, if you choose, but why make them children? Why make them teens? What is that about? I also wanted to talk about plastic surgery, and this goes both ways as well. So we have these teens who are starting things like preventative Botox treatment, something called buckle fat removal, where they take the fat out of their cheeks to look older. plastic surgery, getting lip fillers. If you're an adult and you've had a lot of time to think about the plastic surgery you want to get, if it's something that's going to make you happy and you're not doing it for other people or to look like other people, then by all means, that's your choice. But to promote this to young girls especially and saying you're not enough looking the way you are, or that feature you have is ugly, or you need to look like this person, especially with what we're seeing online, wearing tons of makeup who have had plastic surgery and like having filters on their photos. It's problematic when young women then compare themselves to that. Same thing for young men and boys who are seeing, you know, these super jack dudes who maybe they're on steroids. Maybe that's also an edited photo. It's almost as if the internet is causing more and more people to have issues with accepting themselves just the way that they are. And that's all for today's video, guys. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, so make sure you comment them below. Also, subscribe and hit the notification bell, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.